Hey there, thanks for joining me on Tropical Weather Impact. I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone here in New Orleans as we watch hurricane season ramp up. September has been fairly quiet, but over the past couple of days we've had some interesting features. The main one being Hurricane Gabrielle. This blew up into a massive category four storm, one of the strongest storms of the season, including Aaron as well. And notice we are now tracking two separate invest, Invest 93 and Invest 94. These two features are going to be extremely interesting to watch here over the next seven to 10 days. As you can see, they are moving very close to each other. Interaction would be an issue there, and there's a lot of questions remaining in the forecast on their final destination. We're going to deep dive into these, the steering currents and their future. But first, I wanted to start with Gabrielle because it is an impressive hurricane. Luckily, this is the type of hurricane you're not even stressing about. You're not worried about how strong it gets because it's out to sea and it's impacting absolutely no land right now. You can see the official track of it remaining a powerful hurricane for the next several days. The remnants of it eventually lifting over towards maybe towards Spain in the next five days or so. So what's left over of Gabrielle will be moving off towards portions of Europe. I want to show you this morning what Hurricane Gabrielle looks like on satellite. Just a classic strong hurricane, a well defined eye that has been there for over 24 hours. It skirted to the east of Bermuda by a couple hundred miles, so they didn't have any big impact, just some large swells out in the Atlantic. And it is now sitting over 300 miles away, at least the center is, away from Bermuda, and more importantly, it's moving away from land. And so these are the hurricanes. You don't mind looking like that. They've been flying the hurricane hunters out there. They were when it was closer to Bermuda, getting good data, doing the research things. So these are the type of hurricanes you don't mind happening. Uh, and when they get strong. All right, let's talk about Invest 94 and Invest 93. Invest 93 has the high chance of development right now. Invest 94's chances of development are still questionable, but the chances have been going up for both of these features. Now, the one right now that's got everyone's attention because it's closer to land is Invest 94. In the near term, it's a tropical wave that's producing showers and thunderstorms and gusty winds, and it's currently sitting near the Leeward Islands. And so this disturbed weather will be near the islands for the next couple of days. Between right now, here's Puerto Rico, there's the Dominican Republic. They are going to see some squalls from this. It's probably not going to organize much, though, in the next at least couple of days. Now, once we get out further in time towards Thursday, Friday, Saturday, in the next seven days, we could have a depression trying to form somewhere in here. So that includes maybe a depression trying to form near the Bahamas by the end of this week. We're going to see what it looks like if it can ever organize as it gets over these warmer waters, but we are seeing some model support for development in this zone. That little feature you see spinning there, that is an upper level low, so that's going to be backing away, but a tropical wave following behind and it again it is uh, it has a healthy burst of showers and storms with it this morning. This is Invest 94 and the Hurricane Center is going with a more likely chance of this developing into a depression in the next few days and then moving northwest. Now there are a tremendous amount of un uh, questions right now on how these two features evolve. You have to remember forecasting one tropical storm is difficult, but when you start to throw another tropical system in close proximity, they have to interact with each other. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to come together and create a big storm. That's usually not what happens. Usually one of the features will become a dominant feature. And I caution you just because models show this one being more dominant right now, we're going to have to watch this one because it could easily take over and they influence each other too. And so steering currents, it's all very, very fluid, quite literally when you're looking at two systems. Now, something you're probably going to hear a lot over the next couple of days in the next week is the Fujiwara effect. What is that? Well, it's whenever two areas of low pressure get close enough and they interact. Oftentimes what happens in a Fujiwara effect is one of the systems ends up winning and essentially it consumes the other system. It'll put wind shear on the other system and it'll kill it off. So it'll be interesting to see which one of these actually tries to form faster. Hurricane Center thinks this one, but it'll be interesting to see does this one survive and try to form once it gets further and closer out towards the Bahamas. And so that's what we're watching with our two Invest 93 and 94. Hurricane season, it's about to ramp up. Is it possible we have two named storms at the same time? That is a possibility, but beyond that, there's question on strength and, and these types of things. And so we can look at our models here, and I think our models are actually showing, especially the GFS is showing how really kind of convoluted this can get and how tricky this can get. 
fairly quickly. So let's go out in time. Here we are looking at our GFS and American model in red. The European model is in green. Uh, they're both agreeing that there's something down here trying to form by tomorrow. GFS, excuse me, GFS here with Invest 93. Here's Invest 94. You can see that they're still separate in nature. Go out further in time. Let's go out towards Thursday and Friday. Look what happens. This is where things get tricky. The GFS is struggling on which one of these systems is trying to become dominant. And so you get this long area of disturbed weather between your tropical waves. Now the European model is keeping them a bit more separate. And so not saying either one of these is necessarily true, we don't really know. And again, it gets very tricky to figure out which one of these is going to become dominant if that's what's going to happen. And so just beware, there could be some fairly dramatic swings in the forecast. Now, one thing's for sure, the East Coast and the Bahamas really are going to be watching to see how this unfolds, because if there is something out here, whether it's this feature or this one, it may get tried to it may try to get steered towards the eastern US. When would that happen if there was an actual tropical system off the east coast? What's the time frame we'd be looking at? Well, the earliest reasonable time frame would be by the end of this weekend. The latest reasonable time frame would be next week. And so again, there's a lot of question on timing and interaction between all this. Now what you're looking at here, all these different blobs are showing areas of spin or areas of sh concentrated showers and storms. And you can see models just have things all over the place. This, all this mess in here, you see these little blobs, that's the cold front that's coming down this weekend. And that's why this thing's not coming directly at the Gulf. That's why we do expect a turn. Interaction with an upper level low and that cool front that's going to be coming down. So all that to say, we really don't know for sure the final evolution of these two features. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be one of those sit back and wait. But if I'm on the East Coast, I am on alert right now to watch the tropics daily. Watch what's happening with updates. Make sure you're getting good information here. And also if I'm down here in the Bahamas, I'm really watching this a bit closer. Not sure we're going to have a hurricane in the Bahamas by the by Thursday or Friday, but you could have a developing storm with squally weather and things like that. Now, since these are invests, we are starting to run our tropical models. We're still very early on though, so a lot of our models are still being updated. They're running those calculations. But I will say, looking at models, I can't show you necessarily on my weather software here, but all of our other guidance that we use. Uh, there's a lot of model support for the, one of these two systems to try to form here and the general motion being up towards the northwest as we head into this weekend and even into early next week. So Gabrielle, that one's sold. It's going that way, but these two features are going to be riding northwest and that puts maybe the east coast at risk for a landfalling tropical system in the next seven days maybe even less, depending on how things evolve. So let's talk about the steering currents. Why would this system maybe be a threat to the United States? Well, it's important to understand what the ridge is doing, what our cold fronts and what these troughs of low pressures are doing. So what's happening right now is you've got this big ridge of high pressure centered over the central Atlantic. That's why Gabrielle is going around it clockwise. These two invest features, tropical waves are also going around it clockwise or just on the southern side. And so these two are going to continue to ride around the edge of the ridge. Now as we go out in time, we've got this decent cool front coming down across the US. That's what you're seeing here. So it's important to understand when you're looking at steering currents like this, this is what's happening in the upper levels. Cold fronts are more surface level, but that's what produces the cold front. And so whenever you have this dip in the jet stream, that's a trough. There's a cold front attached to it right in there at the surface. So that's going to be coming down. Now, as that trough comes down, what's happening to the ridge? Well, the ridge has got to weaken because the trough is moving in. And so as the trough begins to weaken, that's why you start to lose less of the west movement and you start to get more of this northwest movement. So here we are Thursday, September 25th into Friday or so, and you can see that the ridge is becoming substantially weaker by this weekend. And so that's why if you have two features, or it's this one or this one, regardless, maybe you have two, they're both trying to move northwest. Now again, if there's two features, let's say this is a tropical system or a hurricane, this is a tropical wave, this little feature becomes part of the steering currents too, they both do. And so you get interaction between the two systems. And so that's why I caution you with the exact steering currents. Uh, and that there's going to be a lot of fluctuations in this. But one thing's for sure, the main ridge of high pressure is going to be weakening, allowing whatever's down here to travel northwest. Now, as we go further out in time into the end of the weekend, what's happening? 
uh oh, the ridge is building back in. So if there's anything down here, it's not continuing to go out to sea. It may start to get nudged towards the east coast. At the same time, there's an upper level low spinning here that can also act to help pull something towards the east coast as well. So this isn't necessarily the best steering current scenario to keep something out to sea like we've seen all season. Whenever you have a system down here and a ridge building in that can be a big red flag for the East Coast, and that's why I think the East Coast needs to be on alert here. Not necessarily high alert, not necessarily stressing about this. We don't have any land falling spots or anything like that just yet, but this type of pattern is one that grabs a forecaster's attention for a Hey, we got to watch this a bit closer than maybe what we had to watch with Gabrielle and Aaron. So, so far, those have been our only two hurricanes and they were powerful at that. It's one of those seasons where you've had a lot of a lot of weak ones, but the two that have become hurricanes have been impressive. Gabrielle has been a strong category four. Hurricane Aaron was a category five. And so what's our next name on the list here? We've got Umberto and Imelda. We could very well have two of those trying to form in the next five to seven days or so with Invest 93 and Invest 94. So yes, we're in September. We're still in the very busy part of hurricane season. We are still thinking October heading into October. At least things are going to be active. October is not the cutoff of hurricane season. It's really as we head into November, things start to improve. And so we got to make it through October here, but that's where we stand right now with what we're tracking in the tropics. There's really just a lot of waiting and watching at this point. Invest 94 and Invest 93 are not organized. Models are going to struggle. The other problem is they're close together, and so that complicates the forecast even more. So do expect changes in the forecast and we will have those changes. We will have those updates for you for the rest of this week. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Tropical Weather Impact. We'll have another deep dive on what's going on out there. Same place, same time tomorrow. Thanks for joining me.